on ya Jump, jump, jump What we done started Look at what we done started This the people party What's up, party people? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name is Talib Kweli, the BKMC, the MCEO. This is the People's Party. Give it up for Jasmine Lee and the place to be. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> you was cutting and scratching over there? I was just doing a little bit of DJing, you know? I'm glad you said that because today's guest is one of the architects of hip hop. Mm -hmm. And hip hop starts with the DJ. And this man started as a DJ. Um, there's a phrase in hip hop called down by law you know what that means no all right down by law means that regardless of what happens in this world your contribution to the culture your contribution to the jam is so inspirational mm. so influential that you down by law it don't matter what you say like somebody who's in hip-hop from back in the day someone who put out a classic albums so they just they down by law if you put in your work for the culture oh, you down by law and that's dues. an old school yeah paid dues that's an old school bronx term this man that we have on the show is the definition of down by law now um we've had a lot of guests from a lot of different backgrounds mm -hmm. but at the heart of people's party it's a hip-hop show mm -hmm. hip-hop is the fuel that lights the fire that is this show you understand? So this guest right here is a legend in the game. He's produced some of the greatest all-time hip-hop records, worked with Tribe Called Quest, worked with the Fugees, worked with the legendary Diggin' in the Crates crew, but his own albums and his own contribution to hip-hop is very, very, very motherfucking noteworthy. Mm -hmm. We got the best producer on the mic, Diamond D in the house. Yes. Diamond D. You look like you're from the Bronx today. How you feeling, bro? I need one of those hats. One of them, I need. What up, Diamond? What's up, man? How you feeling? I'm good, man. How you doing? Good, man. We've been yeah. talking about getting together and doing this show for a That's long right. time. <laughs> um, so, Diamond is one of the first famous rappers that I met and I had a relationship with. Mm. I don't recall how we met. Uh, me neither. But somehow I got your phone number and I was bubbling, doing my thing in the underground scene. Right, it was like right. before I had a deal. I'm living at my mom's house. And Diamond graciously, one of the greatest producers, MCs of all time, invited me to his crib in New Jersey. Because that's right, where right. rappers go in New York when they get some money. Mm -hmm. They move to New Jersey for more space. <laughs> right, you know right. The Calabasas of LA. <laughs> the Calabasas mm -hmm. of New York, right? And uh, I stole my mother's car. Oh my gosh. Mm. Me, my baby mama, Darcel, my man Rubik, shout out to Rubik's. Um, we got in my mother's Volkswagen Golf. And it was the middle of the winter and it was a snowstorm. And the windshield wipers didn't work on the car. <laughs> we got down Flatbush Avenue with Darcel driving and me and Rubik's leaning out the window, taking turns, wiping the snow off the window. <laughs> and we got to the Brooklyn Bridge and we turned around. We made a decision to, to be safe and live yeah yeah rather than go to see diamond you, you were still like an hour away right you know what i mean we didn't get close right right but you know god works in mysterious ways i wasn't supposed to link up with you at that time at that time you know what i'm saying but i mean that's one of my earliest hip-hop memories um you've always yeah. been gracious with your time and your energy there's a lot of mcs that have come up under your tutelage or just using your beats why are you so gracious with your time i mean I'm really not. Depends on, <laughs> depends, on, depends on the individual. Right, right. You know what I mean? It, it depends on the individual. No know? doubt. Some people ain't, ain't, ain't really worthy of it. But mm -hmm. if, if if I see something there, if I see some potential, mm -hmm. you know, I definitely give my time. No doubt. No yeah. doubt. So you grew up in the Bronx with the people of Fresh. That's right. Um, um, Forest Projects. Mm, right there. Um, what is it about the Bronx and the energy of the Bronx that made it such rich soil for the incubation of hip hop, mm, probably just the struggles. Okay, you know, when, like you know, when hip hop in its infancy, mm -hmm. you know, the Bronx is burning down. It's on That's fire. That's right. Slum lords lighting the buildings on fire for yeah, insurance well, money. Crazy. You yeah. know what I mean. So I don't know. It's just like um, <clears throat> you know, from those ashes, hip hop grew. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. And it was just just an mm -hmm. outlet. It started as an outlet. Okay. You know what I mean. And. You know, it turned into a billion dollar business. To many of them people, they ain't seen none of that paper, though, mm. who started it. earlier people, yeah. Yeah. Um, you left the Bronx to go to college in Long Island. Right. Crip. That's where she from. 
there was a, like a burgeoning scene, though, music wise going on there. How was the scene at that time in Long Island different from the scene in the Bronx? Uh, a lot of house music. House music. Yeah, yeah. House okay. was king. Definitely. Okay. And you were DJing at that time, right? You started yeah. as a DJ. Yeah. You're still DJing. Still DJing. I've seen you do a set with 45s. That's right. I'm going to come rock with you tonight. You're going to be DJing tonight. You know how we do. You know. Man, let yeah. me get a little scratch on there tonight. <laughs> <laughs> how about nah? <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. as far so if, if you're DJing 45s mm. you're DJing for a knowledgeable crowd mm. or you're DJing for a crowd that's trying to be knowledgeable both both right you know and then at the same time you know keep people on the dance floor right now that's, so, that's what I'm interested also in but also educate them on where some of these samples originated right yeah. um, speak to me about the challenges of Keeping the dance floor popping, but also educating the people. Like you, like as a DJ, like you, your your time in it spans so many decades mm. that you might play a record that they don't know, but right. you still got to keep them on the floor. Right. Well, they might not know it, but mm -hmm. if it's if it's funky and they got a groove to it, mm -hmm. you know, they'll vibe to it. Right. So you know, everything starts with a vibe. So you know, you just that's what I do. You know, you know some right. joints, some joints I play in my sets. You might have heard, mm -hmm. and the ones you haven't heard will definitely have you like, mm, you know, what is that? Yeah, I guess what what we do like at this point, you're not just a DJ, but you're also a curator of the culture. It was right. like it's on us to be like, even if you, even if you got to take a chance, like they might not know that record, but they might they have to stop and they now they get an education. Right. Yeah. You know, just just like with you, mm -hmm. you know, with the, you know, you might have turned a few people on to Nina Simone. Who right. Not, she might not even been on their radar. Right. You know, and that's 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 the dope. That's the dopeness about hip hop. The craziest know. thing about hip hop is that you don't know if you weren't alive during those sample times. You don't know that these that the songs came from samples. I remember right. when I first found out that a bunch of P Diddy songs, because he was big for taking <laughs> That's what he was doing. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> samples yeah, yeah. and changed them. And then you hear the song, you're like, oh, this Diddy, or right. this is now, Puffy, because it was Puffy mm -hmm. back then. Now, here's what's crazy about what you just mentioned. You come from digging in the crates, right? right? You come from an era and a crew, and people was like, yo, the whole art of it was, you don't know what this is. Mm -hmm. The whole art of it was, I got some shit that you ain't got. Correct. Right, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. We original with the samples. Right. Like like Buck Wild, oh, what's that? Showbiz, what's this? Like, right, right. what Diddy did at that time, you was around, right. making hit records at that time. Right. What Diddy did in that community was sacrilegious. Or what the producers he was working with. Right. Like, I remember like the thing was like, yo, you're not supposed to touch that Cool in the Game record. Mm -hmm. You're not supposed mm. to touch that Sting record. You're supposed to go, you're supposed to dig in the crates. Mm. So the idea that you're taking something that everyone knew people felt like was kind of cheating. Now, you, you as a producer, did the producers... I mean, some of y'all was getting... Checks with Puff at that time, though, right? Yeah, no doubt. No, yeah. Buck, Buck, Buck Wild, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Finesse, too. Biggie mm -hmm. Small. Was, was, yeah, it was writing stuff. Big's album. Yeah. yeah. Uh, producing. Right, right. That's right. I forget. I, I keep forgetting Lord Finesse is ill with the oh, beats. Yeah, Finesse, He's so man. ill with the lyrics. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I remember that. Like, and then, and then, the, and then the next phase of that was like my era with high tech and them coming out where they right. studying from y'all like when we we made our album high tech was looking at showbiz diamond p rock right premier buck wild and high tech was like he couldn't believe how y'all was making the beat he was trying to em emulate what y'all was doing right um and then kanye came out and you could correct me if wrong you would know kanye broke the rules in terms of he would he would take Diamond D drums or JD mm. drums or high tech drums. Back in the days you couldn't take another nigga drums mm. and just put them on your record, right? No. They called it biting. You called it biting, yeah, right? No doubt. But when Kanye <laughs> came out, he he wasn't a, he wasn't in them circles. Mm. He wasn't he would he have he didn't have them relationships. So a right. kid from Chicago, he's like, yo, I'm gonna do what I gotta do right. to make yeah, the yeah. shit hot. And then he mm. said he didn't he didn't have a lot of them records. Right. You know, he said Dilla he had, had them, but you know. Mm -hmm. I guess when he was doing him on his time, right. you know, it was just convenient. Right. And, you know, that's another thing about hip hop, you know, just use what's available to you. Right. And that's that's what I'm saying. So right. we go from his bite into like, well, if you understand the situation, he's just like making his music, right. whatever tools he got. Yeah. And that's hip hop. Mm. Word, word. That's right. You on your albums, on well, especially on Stunts, Bloods, and Hip Hop, mm. which, by the way, is stands out as one of the greatest hip hop records of all time. It wasn't available online for some time, but you mm. can find it now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, People were looking under Diamond D. Instead right, of instead, diamond, instead of Diamond. Neurotics. Mm. Right, and the Psychotic Neurotics. What right. happened to Psychotic Neurotics? Uh, everybody doing anything. You know, okay. People branched off. Mm -hmm. You know, um, <clears throat> one, of, one, of them, one of them teaches in school. Okay. You know, so everybody just, you know, just doing their own thing like right. that. Right. But that's the crew you came. Yeah, yeah, that was your yeah. crew still, that you grew up with. Family. Family. family no right. Doubt. So you were 
what I remember when I was listening to that record, you were explaining the process. You were talking about being signed. You were talking about the uh 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 I hope you find a good A and R. You know what right, I'm saying? You right. was talking about I took this loop and this is what I did with this loop and I right. flipped it and then mm -hmm. I went for mine. You like I added the you I know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, I added the flute. Shouts like, out to Jazzy J. Yeah, yeah, that. man. Hey, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> but that's you were teaching how to create this music. Mm. What made you decide to do that? I don't know. I was just, you know, I, I guess when I was writing that verse, you know, that's, right. that's, that's just what, you know <laughs> that what I mean? But, loop, rhyme, and flute. Right, but, you know, <laughs> I, I, I wrote to the beat. Right. You know what I mean? And, you know, the, 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 the drums was banging, and right. then when the flute came in, so, you know, you it wasn't with really it. premeditated. And Jazzy J just, made that beat? Yeah, yeah. Shout right. Shout out to Jazzy J. Do you, you play an instrument? Uh, I play the drums and the flute. I played the flute too. Uh, that's what's up. Yeah. Pie Piper yeah. ass nigga. Hater. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ultimate Force was a group. Right. Right. You, Jazzy J, and um, Master Rob. Master Rob. Rob. Right, right, right. The song was um, called I'm Not Playing. Okay. You know, Jay also had success with Strong City when mm -hmm. he, he produced um, Busy B's song Suicide. Shout out to Busy. You know what I mean? Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Anytime you do a show in the D DMV, <laughs> oh, yeah, you're going to yeah, run he, into Busy did. B. Right. I spell my no. name with the B. Spell my, <laughs> it's a B for the busy mm. B. Master of the Ceremony, Sexy. No doubt. Grand Pooba and them. Yeah, that was all Jazzy J. Okay. So that's how your relationship started with Brand Nubian, was, right. was through Grand Pooba first. Through Pooba, correct. Okay. Man, that, I'm trying to like put myself in that time period. Mm. Like, like talk to me about that time in the Bronx when it's like, y'all was still young running around the city. Like, right. like, like Lord Finesse and AG was young dudes on the mic. Mm -hmm. Big L, young dudes on the mic. Like, it was ferocious. Uptown, uptown, you know, the Bronx, now rule with brand new being in them. Like, you know, uh, Pete Rock and them representing Mount Vernon. Mount Vernon like, talk like, to me about that whole, like, uptown vibe that y'all had going on. Oh, uh, man, you know, it was like a domino effect. Mm -hmm. You know, first it was the, um, first it was my single, I'm Not Playing. Mm -hmm. Then um, Lord Finesse got his deal on mm -hmm. Wild Pitch, Funky Technician. Mm -hmm. You know, then um, right after that, you got the Showbiz and AG mm -hmm. um, EP. The EP. <clears throat> yeah. Right. Soul Clap. Right. And um, then my album came. Then you, Fat Your Joe's album I, and Showbiz and AG album dropped the same day, right? Same day. Runaway but the Slave. EP was before my album. Right. Right. But yeah, our album dropped on the same day. Runaway Slave and Stunt Plus and Hip Hop. And then Fat Joe's album dropped. Fat Joe. You no. Know, then Big L's album dropped. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was like a domino effect. You know what I mean? Right. And, you know, we all helped each other, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. just try to make the best content at that time. Right. Yeah. Um, Fat Joe was a legend in hip hop before he became a rapper mm. because of your crew. Right. Mm. You shot him out on records. Right. You put him in videos. So me yeah. being a young. We all from the same project. Yeah. Me, me being a young <clears throat> dude, it was like. His full name at that time was Fat Joe the Gangster. No doubt. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. Fat Joe is the gangster of the crew. Both right. his names are good because usually when you have your first name, it's not really that right. popping. But Fat Joe right. the Gangster could have wrote too. <laughs> right. And then there's Joey yeah. Crack. It's like with that. Common. He was Common Sense. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Speak to me about the vision that Fat Joe had because nobody looked at him like a lyricist. When Flo Joe dropped, right. me as a fan, we were like, who is this? Why is that dude rapping? He's the gangster. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then Fat Joe, when you get to the like, when you start with Flo Joe, which was a very good record, but it right. felt like he was just starting to dip right. his toe in the shit. Right, no doubt. No when doubt. you get to 97, when y'all doing Digging in the Crates, like mm -hmm. one, one offs. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, at this point, Fat Joe had been sparring with Pun. Right. Right. So now his 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 blade. When you're around is, nice people, his you get blade nice. was crazy. Yeah. I went back and revisited some because when I first started my career was the second resurgence of digging in the crates. Okay. That's when you start seeing those records in Fat Beats. You right, know what right, I'm saying? Right. Yeah, we yeah, all yeah. came together as a Early crew. Early 2000s. Yeah. We yeah, go. Yeah. We gonna come together, crew. Put out the show. These niggas. The how day we one. Them. Day one. Day period. one. We've okay. been doing this shit since day one. Right. Right. Um, Fat Joe was. He was on that. He was on that mic with Big Al. He's on that mic with with AG, yeah, yeah. with Killers. You know what I'm saying? And he was holding his, holding own. his own. And no sometimes doubt. batting cleanup. 
Mm. Like, and then he went on to dominate in the industry with Terror Squad mm. and make big, huge records. That's right. And then he, you know, went into trials and tribulations. That's right. Got arrested, came back, and came got back on his feet. Got right. back on his feet. That's right. That's what right. is it? Did you see? Obviously, you saw that early. But what was it about Joe? That, what did he have? Joe, he, he just had the passion. Okay. He had the passion. You know, I remember the first day he approached me. He's like, "Yo, you know, I want to, I want to try to do the music thing." Right. I ain't believe him at first. Right. You know what I mean? Because you know he was into you know a whole bunch, whole bunch of other shit. Right. <laughs> um, his passion. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Everything Joe got, he worked hard for it. Mm-hmm. Nobody gave that man nothing. Right. You know what I mean? So you gotta respect Joe. You know, yeah. he's been relevant. You know, um, damn near almost three decades. Yeah. Like people don't really understand. People, I think are not really looking at his story as like he he is hip hop. Oh, no no Puerto question. Rican dude from the Bronx no and question. had to fight and scrap for his. He's I mean, you dominating know, he, underground you and dominating the charts. He, you know, he he was a graffiti writer. Yeah. Like, you know, I, it's funny but you know, I remember watching Joe do the electric boogie. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. I mean, he you know, he, he definitely embodies hip hop. Hip hop. Yeah. Um, early on, you called yourself the hottest producer on the best mic. Best producer. Best producer on the mic. Yeah. And uh, we know you've opened doors for High Tech and Dilla. Do you, why do you feel like producers are so good on their own beats, sometimes better than the rappers? I think producers just know how to ride the pocket. Because mm. mm-hmm. we used to tell the people how to ride the pocket. Right. You know what right. I mean? Right, that's the and job, right? Most producers, not all, but most producers start off as DJs. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So you just yeah, high learn, you, you first learn name timing, was DJ High Tech. Time you learn timing and mixing. You know those are all foundations of of you know being a producer. Talk to me about the special uh, excellence of the legend of Big L. Oh man, going too soon. Mm-hmm. You know Absolutely, I mean? going too soon. Mm-hmm. I think L released what two albums, mm-hmm. the, the one lifestyles, Columbia, the one on and the, Ruckus. and the Ruckus one, right? Um, going too soon, you know. Um, Lord Finesse brought him into the fold. Mm-hmm. You listen to a lot of early Big L. He sounds mm-hmm. like Finesse. Yeah. And then you know there was there was a style that was yeah, developed, no the punchline style. Yeah, that's that's way more influential than hip hop that people give that oh, crew credit for. Definitely. Yeah, because yeah, that yeah, changed yeah. the game. Like, yeah. I remember New Music Seminar, like, before Super Nat and them was freestyling, right. it was like that style was dominating. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's how Finesse got his first deal. New Music Seminar. Yeah, he ain't even win yeah. that year. Yeah, yeah. he was just know, nice with it. Yeah, the, you know, the people in the crowd, you know, they, they they dug it. Right. Yeah. Big L, I never met Big L. He put his well, record... Never, oh, okay. Never met him. I ain't got... I ain't have the pleasure to meet okay. him. Okay. Um, but I'm associated with him through the Raucous Connection. Of course, right. You know, um, yeah, man, his... Um, What's your favorite Big L track? Flamboyant is the one I like the most. I right. mean, um, uh, um, MVP, I like MVP, I like MVP, Flamboyant. Right. And what's the one with uh, with Kid Capri? I like Put Ebonics. Him on. I like Ebonics, but right. Ebonics is like, that's that's the one I think everybody's going to pick. Like, that's the defining Big, Big okay. L record. Um, but yeah, I mean, Ebonics was a revolutionary record. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's revolutionary. Definitely. Like concept wise, um, owning is, is a black record. Right. It's a black record. Apologetically. Yeah. That the, the the ebonics uh, conversation started in academics, and what's interesting about it is, it was a bunch of professors who were trying to be progressive and saying, "Look, people of color and black people, they come from environments that, because of society and because society is not fair, they don't get taught English in the same way. So we can't." judge their intelligence right. based on how they speak. Mm-hmm. Just because someone speaks slang don't mean they're not intelligent. Correct. And so you had a bunch of professors trying to roll it out. like, And I think the name was clunky. You know, mm-hmm. Ebonics, it sounded like, and what, what the story became in the press was, oh, you got colleges trying to teach people how to speak slang. Mm-hmm. And why would I pay my, why would I send my kid to college to learn how to speak exactly. black and speak slang? Right, and right. that wasn't it. Mm-hmm. What they were trying to do was they trying to like acknowledge the fact that you had black kids come from the hood. Yep. You know what I'm saying? But right. the, the conversation got spun. Yeah, you got spun, right. Yeah, and so for Big L to take ownership of that mm-hmm. you, and break it all down, I'm gonna break this slang shit down. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? In a dope way. Yeah, you know he know like I mean? he owned it for hip hop. Yeah. Like, and what's, what's interesting is Big L did for Ebonics, a young kid from the, you know, from uptown, did for Ebonics what all those professors couldn't do. Mm. Right. He made it work. In Why two and a th- half minutes. Yeah, in two and a half minutes. Right. Why do you think that uh, Ebonics is not considered another language? Like, because a lot of black people, 
we're bilingual. Like you can speak Ebonics. <laughs> I'm being honest. But we code though. switch. It's the same language, it, but it, it, we use the words different. We use the But Patois is not the same thing and that's a, like you know, that's a dialect. I feel like right. it's another language. Well I think I think it, comparatively what we African American slang or Ebonics or whatever is considered a dialect, a separate dialect, like Patois is, but Patois is deeper rooted, so it's harder to understand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Creole, Patois, all that's like that's deep root. Like you got to really listen. You got to be in that culture. They speak in English, right. but you got to speak in that culture. Right. Same thing for you know. From same thing in Charleston, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Same thing for what we call mumble rap. Sometimes mm-hmm. you know you speak to a, me be from New York. I might speak to a nigga from Atlanta and not understand what he's saying. It's a whole top. different language. Mm-hmm. You got to yeah. get your your translators in. <laughs> um, on your first tour, you traveled with Yagfu Front. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, the Mercury College tour. Right, yeah, Dougie yeah, yeah. D, Nefertiti. Right. I was hanging out with Neff at that time. Like, oh, yeah, okay. me and Makiba Mooncycle, Neff. She was like part of my little crew. Okay. Um, she, we was in the park smoking. Right. You know, Neff was somebody who she was from L.A. Yeah, but yeah, the, no the label flew her to New York, yeah. and so we was we was she was God body. So okay. I was hanging out with the gods. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, so right. Neff was coming around, and she was freestyling with us and this and that. But um, uh, so that's your first real tour, right? Yeah, college tour. Yeah, yeah. You got a story from that tour you want to share? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a it, it's a couple. I remember we was um, where were we at? We, I think we might have been like in in Dallas or Houston, mm-hmm. and um, some jumped off. with security had to get involved, and uh, we had to cut that. We had to cut that show short. It was, mm-hmm. it was about to get real ugly in there. Uh huh. And um, you said Yag Fu Front. Yeah, I like them. They didn't have a. They didn't have a. They didn't have a fair shot. They didn't. I like their album. Much, I used to bump that. Going on over there, at Mercury. Yeah, I, I remember. I had that album, and I used to play it around people, and people were like, "Who was them nigga?" They were from like North Carolina. Yeah, yeah, from North Carolina. And I liked that album. It, it, early, early, early representatives from North Carolina. Yeah. You know, and um, your man Dougie D from out here. Mm-hmm. Teach you. He used, to, he used to bully them. A little bit. <laughs> you know, just a little bit, like right. you know, just saying, saying little slick shit. Uh huh. I used to be like, yo, it's three of y'all. You know, why don't you just pound them out? <laughs> right, quick? right, right. Handle that. But uh, I don't know. Like, they, they ain't with no pause of them. Right. You know, it, it, it was just funny. They was me. in it for the music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it was just funny to me. Shouts out to um, Yak Fu Front. Yeah. And Dougie D. I, yeah. I'm, I need to revisit that album. I wonder if that's on mm. Spotify or whatever. Um. So right now, people romanticize the 90s. Mm-hmm. Um. Even if uh, you see styles coming back and all that, but even if you go to a party where they playing some trap music, you might get a, a, some '90s records. And there's certain '90s records that just are never gonna go away. Your Pete Rock and Seal Smooth reminisce, yeah. jump around. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Annie up. Right, you know what right, I'm saying? Right. Like certain records that are just like they never gonna, gonna go away. Here. Yeah, but yeah. I feel like for that sound, there are certain architects of that particular '90s sound mm. that is like. When aliens come down from another planet, you be like, "What's hip hop?" You play them this this era of hip hop. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, Q Tip, mm. Showbiz, Buck Wild, DJ Premier, mm. Pete Rock, right. Dr. Dre, right. Mugs, Eric Sermon, mm. Havoc, Molly Ma, RZA, 45 Diamond D, King. Forty Five King, right? Which mm. that's that was an early. Yeah. Collaborated right with us, you. him and right. Marley, and Prince him and Marley, Paul. right? And Prince Paul, yeah, you right. can't forget Prince Paul. Um, do you agree with this? My assessment, yeah, I do. Okay, I do. Yeah. Okay, word up. Uh, I'm glad that I'm right there on the precipice. <laughs> on on yeah. the point, what's yeah. your uh, what's your favorite drum machine? Do you still stick with the same ones, or do you go with the new ones that technology um, comes with? I don't really have a favorite, but the MPC, you know, I, I I've been riding with that through you know through all the changes. Um, from the sixty all the way up um, until the tw- the twenty five hundred X, so mm-hmm. that's 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 a good machine, the MPC. What yeah. do you think about GarageBand? Uh, uh, oh, on on um on the computer, it comes on Mac. It just yeah, yeah. so no, anybody yeah. could be the can, can make a beat. <laughs> People making hit records on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You feel you know, like you're a pro. It's not the equipment; it's what you do with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, what equipment did you? It's mostly the MPC on uh, Stunt Splints of Hip Hop. That was the first MPC, the MPC 60. The yeah. 60, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That's the high tech machine, too. Right. That was like the top of the line back then. Yeah, Roger Lynn. Jay, Jay had one of those. Yeah. One thing that made that album feel like real authentic was the skits. You talked to me about the skits on that album, right, how you right. put them together. Because, yeah, like, um, the albums just cracking you know, on each other. Um, your man, Fat Man Scoop, he on a lot of okay. skits. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, I need to go, go back and listen to it. You okay. hear his voice. Okay. We went to high school together. Okay. So that's how I met Scoop. Yeah. 
Mm. But yeah, um, the skits, you know, it definitely gave it um, an authentic feel. You know, you know, you know, you could tell it wasn't rehearsed. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. So in that regard, you know, I definitely agree with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the second album is Hatred, Passion, and Infidelity. Infidelity. Right. That's a heavy, heavy title. Yeah, yeah, it definitely was. What was going on in your life at that time for that title to be so heavy? Well, I was trying to like just keep it like you know the same three letter words as Stunts Plus and Hip Hop. Okay, okay. But just show a little growth, and you know. With those words that I chose, I was able to write about a wide, a wide range of topics. Right. Because you know that fall under that. Okay. You know what I mean. So that was basically the premise behind that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I have said this on a couple of other shows, but Brand Nubian ran through my house as a kid. My father played it every time any it, it, we had to clean or anything. Uh, How did you um end up with them and get with the Brand to- Nubian? Mm-hmm. Um, me and Grand Poobah were label mates. We were label mates, and um, when the ma- he was in a group called Masters of Ceremony, and once they disbanded, he um, he started the Brand Nubians. You know, he, he found um, Derek X and Lord Jamal. You know, I think they were like um, they they lived in this neighborhood in New Rochelle. Mm-hmm. But that's how I came to know them through Grand Poobah. But you, I mean, there's there's so many other records that you went on to do with. Brand new being and with Sadat. And, right. Um, what do you think about Lord Jamal's newfound fame as a cultural commentator, especially on Vlad TV and then on his own thing, the, the Godcast? <laughs> I mean, you know, Jay, <laughs> hey, yo, Jay, Jay, Jay keeps it a buck. He keeps it a buck. He keeps it a buck, you know, like him or not. Right. And, you he going to say what he got to say. A lot of people like him for that. Right. A lot of people hate him for that. <laughs> right. But I mean, as long as Jay continues to be Jay, mm-hmm. he, he, he's going to be good. Lord Jay with the A. Right. No doubt. Um, so Digging in the Crates, or before I ask you more about Digging in the Crates, one thing that you stressed on them early records is, mind your fucking business. Mm. Don't be over here. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. Without giving up too many secrets, Right. what are the best cities for digging? And maybe you could give up maybe a couple spots. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, I know. See, nah, I'm not supposed a, to be it's, asking it's, this question. It's, it's, it's not, a people's it's, party. It's you gotta that, share. It's not that serious. <laughs> okay. it's not but it that was serious. for a second. At one time, it was. It was. It's see, not I'm that still serious. from that era. I'm mm. still in that era you where know, it was like a lot of people um, find music online. Well, that's what they do now. They they they, yeah. they loop up I call YouTube. E digging. E digging. Right. You know what I mean? But um, some. But I'm talking about original. Answer your question. Some of the cities. Cities. Um, L. A. Frisco, Oakland. Pittsburgh, mm. Philadelphia, uh, New York at one time, Birmingham, Alabama. Mm. Mm. New York was expensive though, right? Was that was the, that was? I'm yeah, talking because, about the, because the records. I think <clears throat> since the culture started in New York, mm. um, a lot of record, a lot of record shop owners knew what the kids were coming in and buying. Right? You Can know, you? All, all these kids are coming in here and they, they would buying, mark the price up. They, they they want this James Brown record, right? They, David Axelrods, and... right? Just for that reason alone, right? The prices were a little more expensive, so when we would go out of town and just grab what we can grab, and you know the prices was like just don't damn near dirt cheap. Right. Um. Can you walk us through for people who make it dummy proof for people who've never don't know what digging is? Like, there's a whole art to it where you look. You're not just like picking random shit, but you're looking right. at the label. You're looking at the writers. You're right. looking at the error. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you might you might like, you know, this James Brown era, but you don't like this James Brown era. Like, can you walk us through, like, v- walking in a store and digging for records? Oh, uh, man. Um, it's everything you just said. Okay. It's, it's, it's reading labels. Mm-hmm. You know, if if, <clears throat> if there's an album I like... Um, I Cover might, art. I might, I, might, I might see who played bass on that album. Okay. And then go see if he made any solo albums. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's really not that hard. It's just a matter of reading the credits, and if 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 you find the album or group that you're really into, a lot of times you'll find spinoff albums. Okay, you know what I mean. So just in that regard, but um, digging goes back to um, you know, again, early hip hop, mm-hmm. where before the samplers, where mm-hmm. DJs would you notice they would scratch the names off records, right? You know what I mean, just for that same very reason. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't want you to know. When I'm when I'm DJing, mm-hmm. you know, when I'm playing the night, right? So it was always there. Do you feel like it was more work back then, or if it's the same amount of work and just you have to do it in different ways? Uh, yeah, it's, it's 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 it's. I think it's easier now. You know what I mean? Because like you know, a lot of, there's a lot of music online, so you don't really have to physically go go find the From vinyl. From place to place, it, you know. 
people who only want vinyl, those are just collectors. Mm -hmm. But um, it don't really matter because at the end of the day, if, if, if you're able to manipulate a record and you sample it and it becomes a hit, the people on the dance floor... They don't give a fuck if you if it's if you sampled it from vinyl mm -hmm. or from the internet. It, it's it's not important. Right. The song is king. Right. The song is king. Mm -hmm. There it is. Um, digging in the crates. So it it, it started as a bunch of friends, mm -hmm. but then it formed as like a real live rap crew, especially in that era where I'm talking about, where um, you know, the raucous era and the fat beats era. Right. Digging in the crates came back. Like I was the OGs to us. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I was just starting. You know, you had you had juggernauts and Gene Gray and Natural right. Elements and yeah. Natural. Right after us, yeah. Yeah, it was like, but y'all, y'all, we we were listening. We were the fans. Listening to Red Alert, listening to Molly Maul, right. watching Video Music Box, looking at these videos like, you know, and and this is what I like about y'all crew. Like you said, if it was like Pete Rock was was getting money, you know, and Pete Rock wasn't really in digging the crates, but like Buck Wild was getting money. Like people was doing it. It was everybody was separate. Fat Joe was starting to blow right, at a right. different level, but y'all came back and still fucked with the underground. Right. Still participated in the culture in a, in a real way. And y'all, it's like y'all formed like Voltron mm. and came back for those um right. records. Um, is you and Showbiz that were the foundation of the crew? Mm -hmm. Talk to me about growing up with Showbiz and, and starting that crew. Um, yeah, it started, it started off with me and Showbiz. <clears throat> we were both DJs. <clears throat> you know, um, we would go to each other's houses and mm -hmm. DJ. You know, it started like that. And, um, then Law Finesse got his deal mm -hmm. with Wild Pitch mm -hmm. for the Funky Technician album. Mm -hmm. And that's the album that I worked on with Showbiz and Premiere. Mm -hmm. And everything just kind of just went from that point. Okay. But that was the starting point of mm -hmm. us actually doing a project together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now that you, you live in ATL now. Mm. Hey, we've, that's one of my cribs. Yeah, we've done some records together and, and okay. I got a nice little studio there. Mm, um, How right. often do y'all get together as a, as a crew? Um... Well, I haven't really seen everybody in a while. Okay. Um, I seen finesse. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I see Buck Wild. Mm -hmm. um, I talked to AG. I'm about to go on tour with AG in about two weeks. I did a show with AG and Master Ace in France this summer in the south right. of France. Man, it was so exciting. Like, well, he jumped in the crowd. It was crazy. Like to see him perform with that same energy is dope. Right, right. Yeah, you know, A is the man. Yeah. yeah, definitely underrated MC David Bars. He's the new. He's the new. Um, he's the new um, MC coming out. Okay. The DITC um camp. Okay. Um, so I want everybody to look out for him. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's mad nice, David Bars. Okay, is he on any of the Don P stuff? Um, he's gonna be on the three. On the three. Yeah. Okay, so but, you had Don Piece one that came out a couple years ago. Right. Um, I'm on the Where's the Love. Right, yeah. Great One of record. My favorite joints. It's a good song. Yeah, yeah. Um You, Sky Zoo, and Elza. Man, that's just heavy competition. Right. Great MCs. Um when you first put out Don Peace, did you know it was gonna be a series? No. Okay. No, it, you know, it was just something I wanted to do at the time. You know what I mean? Like <clears throat> I wasn't really you know, I'm I don't I'm not I'm you know, the producer that I am, mm -hmm. I don't I don't really make like, you know, the trap shit, even though right. I can. Even though you're living in Atlanta. Right, right. So, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. So, it was just more or less, you know, let me put this out, reach out to a few of my favorite MCs, and um, just do what I do, stay true to myself. You know, when when, when it came out, it was a success. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it just showed me that, you know, it, it, it's still a market for that kind of hip-hop. Mm -hmm. Right. You know what I mean? So, right. Yeah. It wasn't really planned, though. Right. That's why on the first one, it's not called the Don Piece One. It's just Don Piece. Right. Right. So Don Piece Two, I, I'm, I'm humbled to be on that one as well. No doubt. Um, man, um, who's the kid that's on the song with me? Nico and K Terra. K Terra. K yeah, Terra Van Poole. That yeah. verse was fucking crazy. Mm. That verse was so ill, and I'm gonna say this yeah, publicly. Nice, nice, out of the bronze. I didn't know that that verse was gonna come on. Mm. So I'm listening to the record um, as when you dropped it. And um, heard Nico's verse. I'm like, yeah. I thought I was going to come after Nico. Right. And then that dude's verse came on. He murdered that shit. Mm. I'm going to say right here. I'm like, it made me want to write my verse over. I'm like, what the yeah, food? Yeah. Who is that nigga? Who is this I thing? Told him, I, I told him that, I, that you know, I was going to put you on the track. Right. So, you know, I guess he was like, okay. You know, he, he went he, in. He had to, you know, bring it. He brought it. Yeah. Back in the day, did you guys, was it that many artists that didn't uh, record together? Because how he said he didn't know that he was going to be on the track. Like, 
now I know you can well, just send in a song. And no, go because to- at first, you know, originally it was it was him and Nico. Right. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Nico. Shout out to Nico is right. I wanted I wanted to put my man Terry Van Poo on the album, and I said, you know what, this would be a good fit for him, and, and you know it'll you know it'll it'll, it'll be a dope way to in- to help people introduce Nico and Terry Van Poo, mm-hmm. since me and Talib are, are, are the more um, established artists. Right. So it just worked out. I just took a shot in the dark, basically. <laughs> now it's a good yeah. record. There's a lot of good rec- uh, good songs on that album. Yeah, no doubt. Um, I appreciate that. I really enjoyed it. Mm. Um, you sent me a bunch of beats recently. Uh, like two days ago. Yeah, two days ago. Dang. I've been in the, in the mentality where I'm like, at this point, I'm really just trying to have fun with it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, 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 compete, I spent a lot of time competing. I dropped a lot of albums. I got 16 albums. Wow. And I always saw myself as competing with other artists. And I'll be honest with you, Diamond, I'm, I'm over that at this point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I feel like I made my mark. I said what I had to say. Yeah, no doubt. Um, but I'm still vibrant and still active. So now I want to just try to do, do projects that are just fun, yeah. that I want to do. And so he sent me these uh, beats, and I recorded to like four of them. Mm. When we finish this, I'm going to play you some shit. Yeah. You know, but we might have to drop a project. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, we might have yeah. to do something. Man, I'm tired of you talking about your projects, and I keep telling you that I'm a rapper now. <laughs> I heard you rap today. And I did amazing. <laughs> did I not do amazing? She All right, before that uh, freestyle that she had kicked for us, before that, I didn't like that freestyle. <laughs> but I like the with one... The microphone with the echo chamber. Yeah. yeah. Listen. She got a karaoke mic she carry around. But I like... She did a the, the, the TV show, uh, Jasmine's World. Mm-hmm. She flipped that, had somebody make the beat, and made a, a trap version of that. Right. That was cool. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out yeah. to uh damn it, Rock 'em all. Mm. <laughs> um now this is what I want to talk about. Yeah. Um producers, high tech, we was doing that underground shit. <laughs> the underground shit. High tech <laughs> had like a fly chain and was driving an escalade. Jay Dilla used to rap about his chain, going to strip his club, rover. his rover, right? right? He rapped about his truck you a be lot. Successful and still, you know, you, still underground. I have always rapped about material items on some hip hop shit right. on some like we come at, we from the good and right. we coming up and I'm wearing the fly shit. I'm wearing jewelry. Right. I'm, I'm having fun. I'm making money. We popping bottles. Being yourself. Yeah, man. Talk to me about that, about how people feel like the underground can't floss. I mean, that's, that's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, ridiculous. Just because I like hard I mean, shit. B- B- Big was underground. That's what right. his hat, though? I mean, you how could I mean? you? Like, you know, yeah. you know he, he, he didn't want to do Juicy, correct? That's right. He, he told, told Puff, Puff it was yo, soft. You know, the fuck is I'm this? not on the soft shit. You and know? he said he had to trust Puff. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, you know, he didn't like that beat. Right. I was told. You know, right. I mean, I've that, heard that's that too. That's the story. Right. That was put out there. You know what I mean? So, yeah. So. I mean, it's it's, it's it's the individual. But it's hip-hop, too. Exactly. It's like, you know... I got bodyguards. I got two big cars. Definitely ain't the whack. And how can you say that's not hip-hop? Mm-hmm. I got a Lincoln Continental and a Sunroof Cadillac. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the that's first rap man. song everybody yeah. memorized. Mm-hmm. And it's full of just material items. Mm. Um. <laughs> <laughs> now, when I put it in that perspective, it, yeah. you know what I mean? I mean yeah. That's Rapid Delight. That's, that's 1979. Right. Mm-hmm. right. That's why you when know. you talk about Busy B, like I t- Busy B, man, this guy's so hip hop. He like one of the first MCs. But when you watch Wild Style, right. he in the limousine with the girls in the champagne, and he's spelling out his name with right. the with the hundred dollar bills. Yeah, yeah. He's like, "Yo, I'm gonna spell my name." Like, what are you doing? Oh, I just thought it would be fly to spell my name. With like, <laughs> right. I'm like, "Yo, it don't get more materialistic than it that, don't. but it don't get more hip hop than that." Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. for what I do, like I do people's like conscious rap, right? Uh-huh. So people like Quali, I love what you do. You're so conscious. You don't rap materialistic. It's so hip hop. I'd be like, slow down. Right. Just because I don't rap material don't mean that they make what I do more hip hop mm-hmm. than right. somebody who rap about cars and jewelry exactly you know what I'm saying yeah Word. and black people have always been flashy for the most part yeah so <laughs> yeah. it just makes sense like everything we do we gotta do it better than every other race like it's just a, a fact <laughs> black and Italians um, talk to me about Lincoln with Tribe Called Quest to work with them uh, how'd that come about again I think when I first met Tip um, up at Jazzy J studio mm-hmm. he was down with you know, Zulu Nation Zulu right course. Yeah, I think you know he came around a few times. I think with um, Red Alert mm-hmm. or Chris Lighty. Mm-hmm. Rest in know. peace. It, it was all of this. Rest in peace, to Fife Dog. Like. Mm-hmm. And um, I actually went down to Battery Studios mm-hmm. to play tip some beats for the Low and Very album. Mm-hmm. And um, I think it was during that session where he asked me if I wanted to be on the album. Wow, that's a huge honor. Yeah, because yeah. he he knew I had a situation. Mm-hmm. 
the song Show Business, Poobah was on the originally. Oh, wow. You got yeah. that version? No. I would love to hear that. But you know, Poobah says some things that some people ain't like. Oh, okay. And um, Jive Records, at the, they <laughs> they told Tip. Oh, because that record ask, was about the Poobah, business. Ask Poobah changed his verse. They didn't name names? Anyway, so. Okay, 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 okay. Poobah said, nah, I ain't. I ain't changing nothing. Mm-hmm. Leave it on there or take me off. Right. In uh, acting, sometimes you can be in a movie and then a final edit, they don't show you. You don't know. Does that happen in music too that you could put down a verse and you think you're going to be on that final song and then you hear it you're oh, like, oh, yeah. where's I mean, my part? At, at, at the end of the day, the artist has the label. I mean, has the last call. Mm-hmm. And if it's something that people can find offensive, you know, the label can possibly make, you know, make a call and take you off of something too. Mm-hmm. But I do know Poobah, he said, I'm not changing my verse. Mm-hmm. And Lord Jamal and Sadat X was like, well, shit, we want to be on our album. Right. You know, keep us on there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you got to go. <laughs> you know right. I mean? <laughs> and then um, I was able to jump on there, mm-hmm. which is a blessing because uh, a lot of MCs, you know, a lot of people didn't rhyme on Tribe albums. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's an honor that we share. I'm on the last Tribe album. See, that's what I'm saying. It's, and that's, man, I went down to... Um, <laughs> You know, recipes to Fife, man. Yeah, um, of course. I was, me and Q-Tip was talking for years about doing a record together. And um, and I'm raised on Tribe Called Quest. I'm, I'm, I'm a son of Tribe Called Quest. Mm. Um, and then Fife passed. And you know, you be you be hitting someone like, let's get together. And, you know, you mm-hmm. could tip be busy. You know what I'm saying? Right, like, you, right, right. you playing phone tag. You try to keep up with him. And when Fife passed, I was like, fuck that record. I'm not hitting about no no. Right. No record. Like if I hit him, it's only about condolences. It's only about mm-hmm. family and friend type shit. Yeah. And um, Ice Cube performed at the Afropunk in Brooklyn. Mm. Q-Tip and Ice Cube had to have a conversation about some shit that had happened back in the day. So Q-Tip showed up to 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 meet Ice Cube to to speak to Ice Cube. And I'm at Brooklyn. Uh, Afropunk was like down the street from where I'm staying. Right. And I run into Q-Tip, right. and I'm like, Yo, this is dope. Like I'm, and you know, I, I consider my style, my rap style is. It's three parts. One part Q-Tip, one part KRS-One, one part Ice Cube, early Ice Cube. Mm-hmm. So I'm like hanging out with Q-Tip and Ice Cube like... You're me. <laughs> this, is like, this is like a dream come true for me. Right. He invited me to the studio. He said, what about that record? I said, you still want to do it? Let's do it. Right. I go to the studio and him and Jerobi are in there listening to Fife Versus over Tip Beats. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Right. And they're like, he's like, yo, I'm putting out a tribe album. Just don't tell nobody yet. Wow. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, I went back to his house like every day for a week mm. just to be a fly on the wall, just to watch him, you know, do that record. And he asked me, you want to drop a verse on this one? Shit, yeah. Hell you know, yeah. Chappelle was there. RZA was there. Chris Rock was, was coming through. But yeah, I mean, for all the fame and accolades and money I made in hip hop, like, I grew up on... Like you, you put me on two of your albums, bro. Mm. That means the, that means more than anything. That means more than anything I could do. Mm. For Q-Tip to put me on an album, the Gangstar album just dropped. I'm on the right. new Gangstar yeah, album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on the yeah. last Gangstar. I'm on the last Tropical Quest album. I feel like legendary shit. Man, I can't even believe mm-hmm. what. Man, I feel like I'm really like living my dream because these. I had all y'all on my wall. You know what I'm saying? And like to be able to talk to you for the show, man. It's like. Mm. That shit is beautiful, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, no doubt, man. Um, that. Thank you, bro. Yeah. Um, you produced a title track on one of the highest selling hip hop albums of all time, mm. The Score. The Score, that's right. Talk to me about linking up with the Fugees and producing, because that's another situation where their production was in house, right. but then they brought Diamond D in. Right. I met Clef at the tunnel back then. Oh, I shit. The tunnel, you know, I used to tunnel. work for Jessica Rosen, Rosenblum and, and uh, Funk Flex. That's right. I used, to hand, I used to put up the flyers, I mean, the, po- the posters at the tunnel before y'all showed up at the tunnel. Wow. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's my history. <laughs> You're paying your dues. You're paying my dues. Yeah. Anyway, he approached me in the tunnel. Mm-hmm. You know, yo, you know, let's, you know, I want to hear some joints. You know, I like your work, you know, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. So cool. So, um... I think maybe like a week or two later, I met up with them at the 45 King house mm-hmm. um, in Midtown. Him and Prize came through. I gave them a cassette. Mm-hmm. Um, then about maybe, I don't know, two days later, he picked the joint out that became the score. Okay. 
And um, like you said, it was all in, in-house. They mm-hmm. had a studio. Um, out book in of East Basement. Orange, East Orange. Yeah, Jersey. the Book of Basement. Yeah. I used to be out there. That's I was I was, was rocking. Book of Basement, right? I was hanging out with John Forte, who was part of that crew. Right, right. So, and then, nice. He was nice. Yeah, John Forte. Shout out to John Forte. John we got to get John up here. Grab Stop hanging out in Cape Cod or wherever you be at and come do the show. Uh, Martha's Vineyard. Martha's and Vineyard that. and all that, you know. <laughs> black excellence. John Forte is the inkwell now. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, keep going. Like, yeah. But yeah, um, so I went out to, I went out there. I laid, I laid the joint down. Mm-hmm. With Jerry Wonder. Right. Yeah, Jerry mm-hmm. was there too. Mm-hmm. That's right. Um, Lauren. And then, um, you know, a few months later, it came out and the album just took off. Mm-hmm. Like 30 yeah, million so. copies. Wow. Mm. Yeah, man. That's, man, the Fuji's. 20 million The Fuji's sold. is the truth. We won a Grammy for best album that year. Mm-hmm. It was a big year in 96. Yeah. The um, there's eras in hip hop that stand out for me. Eighty eight for my for me personally, it's subjective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me right, you, too. Eighty eight. Eighty eight. Think about the albums that came out. Eighty eight. Light as a rock. EPMD. Uh, Jazzy Jeff. Fresh Prince. Molly Maul. In Takes control. Takes a nation. Takes a nation Boogie Down Productions. Yeah. By any yeah. means. Um, like ever. Like just ever. Uh, Dougie Fresh. World's greatest entertainer. Mm. Um, so many albums. Uh, Slick Rick. A lot of classic right. albums. Right. Um, yeah. The next year that comes after that for me is 96. Mm. Mm, 96. The Fuji's right. dropped the roots, Common. Like, there was, a, you know, and then and then a Puff and Puff was really like, yeah, yeah. that's when it, we, we were about to get to that 97 Rockefeller era. Mm-hmm. Correct. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Like, it's like 88, 96. I suppose for someone who's younger than me. No, 96 was actually a great year. I remember the majority of the things that came out. And I don't even remember how old I was during that. I suppose for someone younger, that would be... They'd be like when Kendrick and J. Cole was popping. You know what I'm saying? Like, I guess I wouldn't be able to resonate 2015? with that because, I mean, 96 for me was a great year. I don't. Mm-hmm. I, I was trying to think of an early 2000s year where hip hop was like really like, mm-hmm. but I, I, I can't. It started getting real slick in the early 2000s. Yeah. Mm. The production style started getting real clean and slick. And yeah. It was still like, like you you know. Getting away from sampling as that much. That was like yeah. Nelly, Nelly era. Nelly, Nelly track Chini, masters. Right. Um. Like Ashanti and Asha- Ja Rule. Oh, Ja Rule. Yeah. Murder, yeah. Inc. Murder, Inc. Murder, Murder, Inc. Murder, Inc. Inc. Yes. Murder, Inc. Murder, Inc. was down Swiss on... Beats is just starting to come along around that time. I remember, like, Ja Rule was so polarizing before 50 Cent era. Like, Ja Rule was on the radio really? so much that Underground has didn't like him. And mm-hmm. there was some of them records I liked. The, 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 the Stevie Wonder sample and one of Do I Do. Uh, it worked for him. It worked. Ja Rule but had a lot of hits. What's interesting about that era is I remember having a conversation with people be like, yo, Ja Rule, I don't like his music. And I said, mark my words. Because I saw it. I saw this happen with Puff and him. I said, mark my words. You don't like it now. But time heals all and nostalgia is very powerful. They're going to be playing these Ja Rule Asante Forever. records 20 years from now. Mm-hmm. And even though you didn't like them when, now, you it's going to remind you of a time and you're going to be in a club jamming to them shits. Because yeah. there's underground cats who go to underground hip-hop clubs mm-hmm. and I could who who was listening to to Digging in the Crates records in 97, mm-hmm. who was dissing, puffing them, mm-hmm. right? But then if you do an old school party and you throw on that more money, more problems. You cannot not have Puff on Everybody going to be doing like they had Rolexes. Everybody in the club <laughs> Put your going like in the sky. Everyone going to do it. And sky. some of them same people was, y'all was dissing Puff and Big back then. But it's nostalgia. It reminds you of that era. So even though you didn't like the so- how much the song got played on the Who radio. Who was dissing Puff? A lot of people. If you, people I mean, hated on Puff hard. Yeah, people like, you know, um, shout out to the whole Duck Down. But they was, <laughs> you remember, they was calling that shit out. So question. Boot Camp Click was calling that shit out. Mm. They was like, we not on, we wear boots. Boot Camp Click was like, you can't even wear sneakers, nigga. Like, you wearing sneakers, you soft. We wear boots. So we not on that that slick shit. Like the shiny suit era. They was calling, they was calling right. the shiny suit era. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? That's what made the locks revolt. They, they, they free the locks. They had a whole campaign. Yeah, I remember that. Mm. But everybody come back to Puff. Because everybody look at that time and be like, yeah, we was making some money. Mm-hmm. And then they do the bad boy yeah, tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it seems as if groups, like, that's what you notice for each genre. It's like, you had Murder, Inc., you had Junior Mafia. Like, what is the group that's right now that we're like, oh, that that whole team is just, like, killing I like Dreamville. What J. Cole is doing with that crew, mm-hmm. that but he's doing it in an organic way. Mm-hmm. It's like he's doing the organic. And, 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 and you know, shout out to TDE because they they got had it popping for a long time too. Oh, they, no doubt, definitely. You know, like the mm-hmm. like the, the Dreamville TDE, I feel like. But it's interesting because they shit is not, that TDE was black hippie. They shit is not like how our shit was very just pop and materialistic. Like, mm-hmm. you know, at, back in the days you had to have like, you know, you had Rough Riders, 
Bad Boy, Rockefeller, everybody was vying. When Big passed away, everybody was vying for that title. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes they worked together and sometimes they clashed. Some of the best mixtapes from the era come from them clashes. That's you know right. what I'm saying? I don't, I don't right. feel like we have like really good collabs like that anymore. Like, mm. you know, I feel like even with me talking about J. Cole and Kendrick, like a lot of the, as far as the new, they, they, they approaching 30 or over 30 now. So mm -hmm. a lot of young kids are like, them niggas old. And besides, I know you, sh shout out the artists you working with, but besides the artists you working with, who are you feeling out here? Um, J. Cole, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Um, Kendrick, not to sound cliche ish. Right. Did you um, hear Cole on that Gangstar record? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He sound good on I that like shit. It. That's yeah. one of his best verses I've ever mm -hmm. heard. Yeah. yeah. Came together quick, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Fred the Godson. I took Fred the Godson on his first tour. The word? Yeah, that's a Bronx. Dude. When he first was coming out, okay. I peeped him. I'm like, this little nigga from the Bronx got rhymes. Right, right. I brought him on a tour. Man, his crew, I don't remember exactly all their names, but his crew was wild, bro. They had never <laughs> been on a tour. Them niggas was doing shit that is not... Too hot for TV. I'm not wow. even saying. Yo, there was there was some shit that went down on tour. I'm like, these niggas is wild, they bro. These niggas. Yeah, yeah. yeah, man. Shout out to Fred the Gossip, man. That's, that's, right. yeah. that's a good dude, man. Mm -hmm. Um, I have one more question before we get out of here. No doubt. Did you really leave large prof professor number on your dresser, or was that just a rhyme scheme? No, nah, I did. <laughs> you did? Yeah, yeah, I did. I did. Shout Gotta, out to, shout shout out out to, to the extra large P. professor. Thought I had his number, but I left it on my dresser. Damn. Yeah, yeah. That humanized you for me. Mm -hmm. Like, as far as all the jewelry and all that, right, you were a right, big right. rap star, right. but you still left niggas' numbers on your dresser. Like, that's some shit I would have did. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Pre-cell phones. Yeah, you had to, you had to, you had to memorize down. the numbers, or you had to write them down on little scraps of paper. Mm -hmm. You remember the little phone books? Yeah. Oh, I guess guys probably right. didn't have that. I did. You had when my crew went out to the village to get phone numbers. We had to have a book and a and a pen. Yes. And if you had to ask your homeboy for a pen to get a girl's phone number, you got clown like, nah, nigga, get your own pen. I guess you <laughs> just ain't getting that number today. Well, you know, actually, cell phones were around back in you know, you well, for y'all. But the, the big, the, the big, big, big one, like a vase. Y'all was more a cell phone. Y'all was hanging out with hustlers, man. <laughs> nah, nah, I, I, I didn't own one of those. <laughs> The it Zach was, Morris Remember the, um, the Ultra Magnetic album cover? Right. Said G's holding one, I think. No doubt. Or was the Cool Key, one of them. That's no doubt. Yeah. <laughs> Critical beat down. That album came out in 1988, too. That's right. No doubt. Shout out to the Bronx. Shout out to Diamond D. Yeah, yeah. People's Party. Give People's it up. People's Party! I like how you ended that on the uh, Ultra Mag. It brought it yeah. back to the Bronx, brought it back to 88. Everything in full circle.